Hi, this is John with Fix It Planet. Today we got a Galaxy S8. It's a T-Mobile version. And uh, the screen is busted pretty good. That's your fingerprint reader right there. We'll point some things out about that later on. Volume. Power. So um, we're going to take the start by taking the back off, and um, this is uh, extremely difficult. Um, just you need to get it uh, very hot, and uh, in the process of getting it very hot, you want to avoid getting yourself burnt or anything like that. You're gonna might need a little help from a friend to uh, place the pick in there for you uh, once you get a gap started. Otherwise, you might find that difficult because you have to apply a lot of um, force uh, to, to get a gap started. And you might need both hands for that. So, it does help if you have a friend standing nearby that can push the pick in for you once the gap is started. So that's the part that, that got cut out you didn't get to see. And um, I, I also didn't, didn't really show the total time it took to, to heat up the back. Um, but you can see that I'm using a heat gun. I did preheat it on a, a hot plate. And then I used the heat gun to, to get it uh, even hotter. There is a, a cable right along here uh, for the fingerprint reader right in this area so you want to be careful that you don't uh, mess that up that would be a very bad mistake there's also a NFC antenna and um, you know it's probably okay if you get a little bit of a nick in it along the edges but if you tear that the NFC antenna you're you're gonna have to replace it so just be mindful of that because there is some adhesive around the edge and uh, a second um, a second layer of uh, adhesive. There's the NFC antenna. It's just sticking to the back, separating that. And uh, there's some uh, white adhesive around the edges. There's also some black adhesive um, a little further in. And so you'll have to get in pretty far. Now there's the uh, pop connector right there for the fingerprint reader. And so you want to be careful as you're removing that that you don't rip that cable right there. Now if you do a good job of removing the back, you'll see that the adhesive is still in pretty good shape. I'm just pointing out the uh, fingerprint reader again. It's very important not to damage that. Uh, our tape, uh, our adhesive all around the edges here is in good shape, so we'll be able to reuse that. Uh, if you damage it or mess it up uh, really bad, you'll want to replace it, get some fresh, and um, just point it out a bunch of screws. We're going to take those screws out now. They never want to come all the way out. I don't know what it is about these Samsungs. The screws always get stuck uh, before they come out, so I usually end up taking them out with squeezers. Sometimes you get lucky and they'll come out. I don't know. Some of them do, some of them don't. So it's, it's very much like the uh, S7 in a lot of ways, uh, but one of the nice things uh, about the S8, I think, anyway, is that um, there's no more buttons down at the bottom. Uh, it's, it's all built into the software. So you don't have to, to worry about that if you want to change out the charging port. Um, you would do essentially the same thing that we've done up to this point, and then... Um, there's your NFC antenna. We do have a little sticky uh, adhesive on the edges of that. You want to go ahead and separate that. Be careful not to tear it. Uh, like I said, if you get a little nick along the edge there, it'll probably be fine. But if you tear tear it completely, um, yeah, you're in. You're gonna have to replace that. So these little uh, plastic caps um, are sort of fitted into the frame with little notches 
uh, around the edges and they fit underneath the frame and you just pry those loose and it will come right out and there's three separate pieces that sort of fit together like a puzzle along with the NFC antenna so once that's been removed you'll be able to get access to the charge port you'll be able to get access to the battery the motherboard first thing we're going to do is disconnect this uh, battery and um, like I was saying um, the charge port down there at the bottom on the right hand side that's the video cable I just pointed at as you can see that matches that and um, anyway the bottom uh, on the right hand side there is where the charge port is if you have to replace that you can actually do that now without removing the screen disconnect everything uh, the two antennas There's actually a third one there uh, it's more like a pop connector style and we're going to disconnect the bottom of this motherboard from the charge port dock and um, I forgot to take the SIM card out so sliding this board out uh, is a little bit easier if you remember to take that out first yep there it is now I'll have to sort of reposition the board a little bit so I can get get that tray to pop out so you certainly don't want to forget that and then try to yank that board out of there so as you can see once that's removed it comes out pretty easily we'll set that to the side and now we'll be able to get access to the the back of the screen through a small uh, spot right here that we'll be able to push on and that will help us uh, get a small gap started once again to put our pick in there and at this point it really doesn't matter uh, about the screen it's already damaged and uh, so we're, we don't care about trying to salvage it or anything it is uh, extremely thin so in this case it actually separated the glass from the display um, there is a battery still attached here in this particular case uh, you want to also be sure uh, unless you want to remove the battery first that you don't puncture it cut it or damage it in any way as we know that can be a big problem very hazardous so the screen is actually stuck down all the way across I mean the whole surface of the back of the screen has adhesive so there's virtually no part of the screen that does not have some kind of adhesive on it so it sticks around the edges it sticks in the middle everywhere there's the battery again it is exposed to the back so be careful you don't put a tool into that and uh, it's kind of nice not having to worry about the little buttons under the edge of the screen um, that uh, can be easily torn or damaged in this case we don't have to worry about that you can see the burn spot on the display there so now the glass is actually just going to come right off by itself and then uh, we're going to remove the rest of the display out from behind it which is very thin it is in layers so this isn't the whole the whole display but it is part of it and um, once again um, our adhesive is in good shape pretty well we're gonna go in and we're gonna take out any uh, bits of glass that might be left behind make sure there's nothing uh, that could cause the screen to crack or prevent it from laying down flat on the frame so you can put fresh adhesive it's probably um, in many cases you may have to uh, but if you do a good job of removing the screen you can keep all of that intact and it's still extremely extremely sticky um, and sometimes that can create a problem when you're trying to work on it if you apply any pressure at all it'll stick to your mat 
So you want to make sure your mat's clean of any kind of glass or, or other debris so it's not picking it up. Sticking to the adhesive. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and just put all the things uh, back that need to be there. The, the cameras, uh, the power button, the antennas. We're going to reconnect this motherboard, everything, back the way it was before we took it out. And then we're going to test the display. And another nice thing about the S8 here happens to be that once this board is, is put in place, uh, it doesn't have to be removed to put the new screen on. There's an, a large enough uh, gap in there near the connector to slide the cable through. As you can see, the frame is still sticking to the mat. So we're just going to uh, do a quick test of the screen, make sure it's okay. Um, this is, you know, not really necessary for the video, but for the sake of from start to finish, I just thought I would go ahead and leave that in because it is something that you should do before you put the screen down permanent or you may have a, a real problem trying to get it back off if it is defective in any way. So I haven't had an, uh, an S8 in here yet. Um, this is my first one, I think. In any case, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, I don't have, a, uh, haven't had an S8 Plus either. Um, but I thought I'd go ahead and do the video now uh, since I happen to have one in here. Um, so there are some other, uh, you know, tear down videos, repair videos, some things like that on the, on the internet that you can refer to if there's anything in this video that didn't didn't go over or cover something that you need to know. It's a fairly new phone, so there's not not a total uh, it's, it's, I mean there's there's actually a lot out there, but there's not as many as some older phones. I don't know, it's weird. Some of, some of the older phones don't have hardly any videos either. So I just did one um, with that Rugby Pro a little while back, and there's practically nothing out there on that. But then again, it's kind of like who cares, you know, right? But I don't know, maybe somebody can use it. So there's the slot right there that the uh, cable's going to slide through. That's going to make it easier on us. We don't have to take the board back out. I want to make sure to connect this cable first. Uh, make sure the connector is uh, seated properly so it's not uh, out of alignment. When I go to put the screen down permanent, it's going to be stuck down good. And it will not want to come off without doing damage. So we just apply a little bit of pressure um, all over the screen, but not enough to, you know, damage it. We don't want to crack it again, right? So we don't put too much pressure, but we want to apply a little bit of pressure all the way around and um, make sure everything is, is connected and seated properly before we close it back up. Now there's a little, little uh, shaft right here, this little thing I'm pointing at. That can actually fall out, and it did in this video, if you happen to notice that. Um, at one point, it drops out on the mat, and I move it out of the way, and we did put it back. So you have to make sure that you're... Oh, let's turn this around. So you have to make sure that if something uh, unexpected happens that you're paying close attention to what you're doing so you'll catch it and you don't lose a part that needs to be somewhere in the phone. Just happen to notice that one piece does come out. 
without a whole lot of effort. Now we can go ahead and put our screws back in and um, we'll get this uh, back put back on. Reconnect the uh, fingerprint sensor. And we'll be wrapping it up here shortly after another good test. Now that we got the last screw in, we'll be able to get our back, reconnect the fingerprint sensor, and uh, and seat the back back down. And uh, I'm going to try to make it where you can see what's going on. Um, my fingers are just too too fat and too big to to fit down in there uh, properly and be able to to get that. So we're going to use the uh, spudger, and we're going to connect that with the spudger. And then we'll put our finger back in and just check it and make sure it's all the way down, seated properly. Once I'm satisfied that's okay, we'll go ahead and put the back down, apply a little pressure back down around the edges again, all the way around. And that bad boy is stuck down good. Put our sim tray back in. And we'll go for a final test here. So we'll check the cameras and we'll tr make sure it's charging okay and just gonna look around the edges, make sure there's no gaps, make sure everything's nice and seamless. And uh, it is very nice. Since there's no SIM card, I can't really do a test uh, phone call but it'll be all right you can do a more thorough test uh, when you're doing this repair you can if you want uh, go through practically every function but for the video we're just doing a few quick checks to show that this is all good working fine as long as you do everything um, carefully you should not shouldn't have any problems with the phone and uh, we're charging it looks like I can't see it very well let's take another look there we go you can see the lightning bolt in the battery there go ahead and power it off and then we'll plug it in one more time so hopefully this video was helpful for will be helpful for someone i appreciate you watching like subscribe share and thanks for watching bye bye now